My name is Lindsay Lee Hobson and I work with organisations to elevate their emerging leaders and create the ultimate next generation of leadership. I'm also the founder of the Learning and Development Collective, where passionate and driven L&D professionals come together to exchange trending topics and innovative ideas and the best suppliers for their training calendars. And we're here today to talk about a brand new program we have in the metaverse called the Learning and Development Evolution. It's designed to support the career development pathways of L&D professionals all around the world. And I'm joined by this incredible woman who is one of our first trainers for this program. Welcome Annalie Blundell, who is the 2021 AITD L&D Professional of the Year and also known as the People Whisperer. So I'm feeling a little bit chuffed that I get to be <laughs> on the stage with you. Welcome, Annalie. Thanks, Lindsay. I know that's a bit of a mouthful as well. Uh, I didn't even give you the full title of that award. It's, it's a long one and it's a good one and I'm so honoured and excited and really chuffed to be with you today. Out of curiosity, what is the full title of that award? Oh, now you're going to challenge me. Australian Institute of Training and Developments, Professor, do, no, Dr. Alistair Rylitz, yes. <laughs> Learning and Development Professional of the Year. I hope I've got that right. If you are a forum member and you're watching this and you know what we're talking about, pop it in the comments or <laughs> this video. Help us get the name correct. I'm, Annalie, I'm so sure that's correct, but if you're watching this, make sure you do. But we're here today to talk about the fact that you're coming to join us for the evolution in one of our first training sessions. And before we get into your topic, which is one of the topics our members have requested, tell us a little bit about you and what it's like to be Annalie in the day in the life of. Oh, a day in the life of, it is varied. Lindsay, it is varied, just the way I like it. So <laughs> um, my calendar is very colour-coded and, and I have several colours. This is how I organise my life. And colours correspond to the types of work and activity that I do. So there is executive coaching. Uh, there is women at work programs where I work with women and men to elevate their status within an organisation and help them overcome the gender penalties of working in a male-dominated environment. Um, there is training and development um, programs such as clear communication, credible communication, critical conversations and coaching skills for leaders. That's a bit of a mouthful as well. So um, in the work that I do, I like to mix it up. I do one-on-ones, I work with groups um, and I also get to do short um, uh, short stints with, you know, with um, companies and teams as long as well as longer programs. So varied is the key. Yes, absolutely. But it is the spice of life. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> they do. And when you decide to make human beings your specialty, particularly when it comes to communication and connection, the way they influence, engage, impact one another, you will be guaranteed to get nothing but Buried. <laughs> yeah, 100%. What is it? 7 billion people on this planet. So 7 billion something different variations of <laughs> one thing, which is incredible. But yes. tell us a little bit about your topic that you're coming to run a training session with us for. So we're talking about critical conversations. And I, I'm not at all surprised that this is a hot topic for the L&D folks. Um, and that's for one main reason. You're human. That's it. I've said it. Let's just start with that. <laughs> um, I find this is a topic that transcends title, industry, um, backgrounds. Wherever you go, people have to have difficult, hard, confronting conversations with peers, loved ones, um, neighbours, strangers sometimes. And our ability to do so is a critical um, determinant of how fast we move through our life, whether that's up our career, um, up in our careers or uh, deepening in our relationships. Mm -hmm. Our ability to have those critical conversations is a skill that every human needs. Yes, so true. And in fact, one of the reasons I started this program uh, in the first place was because L&D professionals are really feeling the pinch right now. Companies are focusing in really hard on where's the value, where's the value to the bottom line, where's the value to my people, especially the retaining staff and developing staff as well. And that's all coming down onto an L&D professional's shoulders. And it's a lot. And a lot of the time people don't know what they're asking for. They don't really know what they want. They just know that you as an L&D professional, you need to sort it. And that's one of the reasons we've got this training because a lot of our members are feeling exactly that so 
for you in particular, Emily, I mean, you've been doing this for, for a long time. You're so well versed in this topic. Um, I know I've known you for a few years and what you do is amazing and I'm such a big fan. So I feel really lucky that you're joining us today and I know our members are excited too. But tell us a little bit about the impact that you've seen Critical Conversations and this particular discussion point have with your clients. Well, one of the things is one of the misconceptions about having critical conversations and one of the reasons we avoid them is because we're worried about breaking or bruising relationships. Yeah. Um, and so people tend to avoid them. They stall on them. They sit on them. They do every, everything they can to get out of having that explicit, sometimes confronting conversation. And the irony is that when you can actually have that conversation and lean into the possibility of fracturing the relationship, what actually happens is it typically strengthens. It's so crazy, right? You, you think about it. So whether this is your relationships in the workplace or whether it's on, on the home front, um, I, I'll give you an example. So I worked with a woman a couple of years ago. Um, we were friends and then we decided to do this piece of work together. And we had to have a really difficult conversation about pricing and it was awkward and i was going through all the motions of oh i don't want to ask for too much but i don't want to underprice myself um i don't know how to have this conversation i found out that our pricing expectations were very different so i was feeling undervalued and and it took me quite some time to get to the point where i thought you know what i have to make a decision here I can either go with what she's offered and feel resentful, undervalued, and that that's going to affect our friendship because you know what happens when you're holding on to something, <laughs> you know, that emotion, that resentment, it leaks out. So as much as you think you've done the work and no, 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 we're all fine, you ain't fine and they can feel it. So, <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, I thought that was one option or the other option was to say, I won't feel good about this working relationship if I don't speak my truth, if I don't stand for what I believe in, if I'm not congruent with what's right for me, there'll be no point doing this work. So I thought, what have I got to lose? So I had the conversation and she went, oh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and I thought, what? <laughs> uh, I, I've been tossing around, uh, I've been like, losing sleep it's been a week i've imagined all these scenarios you know what it's like you imagine all these scenarios about their responses and she just flippantly went yeah, yeah that's fine and so i think how much of what are, what we're sitting on in the workplace is actually just a regular conversation it's not even a critical conversation it's just something we've blown up in our mind and you know when i think about L and D folks and the, and the conversations that they need to have you, you're you're spot on so i was thinking about things like you know, um, you're expected to, del to deliver on behavior change, but you're given the budget and the resources and the backing for awareness building. And you know, there's a difference between the two, right? Here's a bit of information. We're going to run our, run a one hour webinar and that's a knowing piece. Um, but you're actually expecting us to deliver a doing piece, which is they're now going to operate. They're now qualified coaches, <laughs> very different experience. And so Maybe you have to have the conversation that says, I don't have enough resources. I don't have enough backing or support, or the expectation is unrealistic or too high. Maybe it's around, you know, saying, I need to be involved earlier on in the conversation. I am a business partner and I, and I need you to see me as a business partner, not a, a thing that's tacked on at the end, you know, once we've made all the decisions and I don't get to be a part of crafting and co-creating that. So there's lots of um, topics that L and D professionals, apart from your every day, you know, you took my pen and you ate my lunch in the lunchroom <laughs> and, you know, might want to wear some deodorant. I mean, these are like, we laugh, but these are the conversations that come up all the time in the trainings. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And actually something you said reminded me of something we're speaking about in the forum in our last session in July, which is separate to the training sessions, our peer to peer support network and shout out if you're a forum member, comment below and let us know you're watching um, where everybody asks for training and training isn't necessarily the solution. But because it's that hot potato and you feel responsible, you take it on and you hold on to it and you have exactly that sort of train of thought that you described before over <laughs> how am I going to put together a training that fits these parameters when I know it's not going to solve the issue. Yes. Such a common one that a lot of people in the forum are feeling too. And so this is going to be a fantastic topic for that. I'm so excited for it. But you're 
One of the things I really um, vibe with with you, Emily, is how passionate you are about supporting L&D professionals. Like, and as L&D professionals, you and I know, and everyone watching this knows, we're so passionate about helping other people as well. So how have you found that the ability to lean into this, and I love the language you used before, like lean into the critical conversation, lean yeah. into that. How have you found that's made it easier for people who are perhaps experiencing that anxiety and that fear-based train of thought um, that we just spoke about when they do that? One word, boundaries. <laughs> and <laughs> boundaries are really, really important, right? So what you say no to defines what you're able to say yes to. And as a professional, we all want to do our best. Mm -hmm. And our ability to hold firmly to our boundaries that allow us to do good work is sometimes really challenging. And so a really common critical conversation is being able to ring fence, you know, I've got this much capacity, I have this much resources, I've got this much time, what do you actually need? And I don't want to overpromise, you know, what I can deliver. And not just L&D professionals, yes, you know, this is something that's important for this particular industry, but you would know we're all living in the current times. So post pandemic, people are going nuts with workloads and burnout and it's rife right now. So our ability for self-care and um, being really tight around what we are um, okay with signing up for yeah. when it comes to the work that we do. So a critical conversation, and I want to just clarify, it doesn't have to be a really big one like, oh, you're getting fired or, oh, I want a divorce. Or, you know, people think it's this massive conversation. And I say, sometimes it's as simple as saying, um, excuse me, but you've got some, um, you know, um, you've got some spinach in your teeth. <laughs> you know, it could be something as simple as that. It's awkward. It makes you uncomfortable. It makes the other person uncomfortable. You're going around in your head. Should I say it? Should I not say it? So it doesn't have to be something big, but it has to be something you think is valuable and you want to have on the table. And so when it comes to the biggest impact in the, the life of an L&D person in the times that we're in, it's about managing workload and, and your clients, i.e. businesses, expectations of delivery. Oh, I love that. And I've just pictured so many forum members were sitting there going, oh, I need this in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and if that's one of you and you're watching this, make sure that you join us in the evolution or you can reach out to Annalie as well because her LinkedIn and contact details will be around this video too. But Annalie, what's your number one takeaway that you'll be sharing with attendees of your training session? What's your mic drop moment? Okay, mic drop moment is your ability to sit in discomfort gives you the ability to have the critical conversation. What I notice is the more comfortable you are in the discomfort, the more likely you are to have the conversation when you need to have it, not 10 weeks too late, <laughs> but when you need to have it, the way you need to have it with the person you need to have it with. Our ability to sit in the silence of someone who's just heard news that they have to process mm -hmm. and not rush in and quickly apologize or change our mind or make it better or make them feel better. You know, it's this sort of skill around being able to sit in their discomfort, our discomfort and the potential future discomfort is um, hands down one of the biggest um, skill sets you need when it comes to cultivating your ability to have a critical conversation. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this now. Um, this is going to be incredible. I mean, now, I was excited before, but that was incredible. <laughs> that was mind blowing to the point where I lost my words. So, Annalie, thank you so much for joining us for our first training session. I know our members are really looking forward to it. And if you're not a member yet, make sure you reach out and let me know that you want to join us. Um, we run discussion groups, we run sorry, round tables, not even discussion groups, we run round tables, we run trainings, which is where Annalie is coming in. And you have 24 7 access to our resource library but also your custom built co-working space in the metaverse and if you haven't been to one of our conferences yet make sure that you check it out because the recordings from that are amazing so Annalie thank you once again we are so looking forward to the training session make sure you reach out to Annalie make sure you reach out to me and join the evolution and we will see you in a few weeks